gotta give a big shout out to Lit RPG Rees and of course to Paul Bello, fine fellow for the inspiration behind this deep dive. You ever have one of those gaming moments that just stick with you? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm talking about that time our group was facing down this like soul-sucking shadow beast. Oh wow. Totally overpowered, we were about to get wiped. Yikes. But our cleric, they had this weird amulet. Okay. Thing was practically humming with energy. Turns out it could absorb the beast's attacks. What? Flip the script completely. <laughs> Talk about a clutch play. Ah, uh, the power of a well-placed magic item. That's what makes this deep dive into evolving magic items so exciting, isn't it? For sure. This article from Litter PG Reads really got me thinking about how we can elevate those moments, make items more than just static bonuses on a character sheet. Exactly. We're not just talking about a plus one sword here. This is about items that grow, change, maybe even develop a personality alongside your character. Right. And the article lays out this concept of growth foundations. Basically, the triggers that make an item evolve. Mm. Things like hitting milestones, how often the item gets used, even specific achievements in the game. What's fascinating about these growth foundations is that they turn the item into a reflection of the character's journey. It's not just about grinding levels. It's about those pivotal moments, those hard-won victories that shape who your character becomes. The item becomes a tangible record of that growth, a living testament to the challenges they've overcome. Okay, so let's say you have a fighter whose sword levels up alongside them. Does that mean it just gets like a damage boost every few levels. It could be that straightforward, sure. But imagine if the sword actually transformed visually as it gained power. Maybe the blade starts to glow, runes appear on the surface, or even the metal itself changes, becoming stronger, lighter, maybe even imbued with elemental energy. It becomes a visual spectacle, a way to show off just how far your character has come. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's not just a number change, it's a whole presentation. But the article dives even deeper, right? Yeah. It talks about these bonding mechanics that go beyond just using the item. Right. This is where things get really interesting. It's about forging a genuine connection between the character and the item, blurring the lines between tool and companion. Okay. We're talking about emotional resonance, shared experiences, maybe even sacrifices that impact the item's development. Okay, give me an example. I'm having trouble wrapping my head around this emotional resonance thing. Are we talking about like talking to your sword? Think about it this way. Every battle, every victory, every close call, those experiences leave an imprint on the item. Maybe it's a subtle shift in the aura, a faint whisper on the wind, or even a change in how the item feels in the character's hand. It's a way for the item to react to the world around it, to reflect the emotional weight of the journey it's sharing with the character. I'm getting chills here. Yeah. So it's like the item becomes a witness to the character's story, almost like a silent partner. Exactly. And the article takes it even further with the concept of memory imprints. Imagine an item that actually remembers the battles it's been through, the foes it's vanquished, the wounds it's helped inflict. Each victory could etch a new inscription on a sword's blade, or a shield could bear the scars of every blow it's deflected. Okay, now we're talking, but hold on. Let's say the shield is super old, passed down through generations of heroes. Would it be like overflowing with memories? How would a player even keep track of all that? That's where the game master comes in, right? It's about selectively revealing those memories, weaving them into the narrative at just the right moment. Maybe the shield whispers a warning based on a past encounter or reacts strangely to a particular type of enemy. It becomes a way to deepen the lore of the game world, to connect the present to the past in a tangible way. Whoa, that's deep. So it's not just a cool item, it's a storytelling tool. I love it. But I do have one question. What about the character's personality? Do their choices, their values, play a role in how the item evolves? That's a great question, and it leads us to another key aspect highlighted in the article. Soulbinding. This is where the line between item and wielder truly blurs. Imagine a warrior whose very soul becomes intertwined with their axe. They might gain incredible strength, but they also share in the axe's pain, its thirst for battle. Whoa, now that's intense. It's like a double-edged sword, literally. You get this amazing power, but there's a price to pay. It makes you wonder about the potential downsides of having an item that's so deeply connected to you. What if it gets corrupted? What if you lose it? Those are excellent points, and that's exactly why the concept of balance is so crucial when designing evolving magic items. We can't have these items becoming so powerful that they break the game, right? Right. It's got to be a challenge, not a cakewalk. <laughs> But the article mentions balance mechanics, so I'm guessing there are ways to keep things in check. Absolutely. Think about it like this. As the item evolves, the challenges it faces should evolve as well. 
<laughs> Maybe enemies develop resistances to its powers, or new threats emerge that require the character to adapt and find creative ways to use their evolving item. Okay, so it's like an arms race. The item gets stronger, but the world pushes back. That keeps things interesting for sure. But let's talk about something a bit more, well, visual. I mean, if an item is evolving, shouldn't it look the part? Absolutely. This is where we tap into the power of description and imagination. The article mentions things like a sword glowing brighter as it gains power, or a staff morphing its shape to suit different combat styles. It's about bringing the evolution to life, making it a visual spectacle as well as a mechanical one. Now that's what I'm talking about, a glow up for your gear. Yeah. But what about the player's input? Can they customize how their item evolves, like choosing a specific path or aesthetic? Customization is a fantastic way to enhance that sense of ownership and personalization. Imagine choosing an elemental affinity for your weapon. Fire, ice, lightning, each with its own unique visual effects and tactical advantages. Or adding embellishments that reflect the item's history or the character's personality. It becomes a true extension of their identity. Hold on, I'm getting an idea. What if the embellishments weren't just decorative? What if they actually granted bonus abilities or tied into the item's lore? Like a gem on a sword that unlocks a hidden enchantment based on a specific myth or legend. I love that idea. It adds a whole new layer of depth and intrigue. It's like each customization choice becomes a mini quest in itself, a way for the player to delve deeper into the world and its history. This is blowing my mind. We're talking about items that tell stories that grow alongside your character that are practically characters themselves. But I do have one nagging question. How do we integrate all this awesomeness into a campaign without overwhelming the story or unbalancing the game? That's where the art of game mastering comes in. Remember, these evolving items are tools to enhance the narrative, not hijack it. It's about finding that sweet spot where the item's growth feels organic and serves the story, not the other way around. Okay, so don't just throw a, a super-powered item at the players and call it a day. There needs to be thought, purpose, a connection to the overall narrative. Makes sense. But how do we actually do that? Give us the goods. Well, for starters, we need to think about those growth foundations. How do we want items to evolve in our world? Will it be tied to milestones, usage, achievements, or a combination of factors? And how do we make those triggers meaningful, something that players will actually care about? Okay, so we set the ground rules first. Yeah. Got it. What's next? Then we think about those bonding mechanics. How can we make players feel truly connected to their items? Maybe it's through role-playing opportunities, choices that impact the item's development, or even sacrifices that have a lasting effect. It's about turning that item into something more than just a piece of equipment. It's about making it a part of the character's story. So it's like building a relationship, right? Yeah. You have to nurture it, invest in it. And speaking of investments, what about resource management? Right. Is that something we should be thinking about when it comes to evolving items? I mean, if an item is constantly growing, getting more powerful, shouldn't there be some kind of cost, some kind of limitation to balance things out? Resource management is a fantastic way to add a layer of strategy and realism to these evolving items. Mm. It forces players to make choices to weigh the benefits of using their item's powers against the potential cost. Maybe the item draws power from a limited energy source that needs to be replenished, or perhaps using its abilities drains the character's own life force, adding an element of risk to every decision. Okay, so it's not just about getting the coolest, most powerful item. It's about understanding its limitations, knowing when to use it and when to hold back. It has a whole new dimension to gameplay, doesn't it? It makes those choices matter yeah, even more. Exactly. And it opens up so many creative possibilities. Maybe the energy source is tied to a specific location or ritual, forcing players to go on quests or make sacrifices to keep their item powered up. Or perhaps the item itself has a personality, a will of its own, and using its powers requires bargaining or even appeasing it in some way. Now that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about items with character, items that feel like a part of the world, not just a stat boost you equip. But let's not forget about the visual aspect. If an item is evolving, shouldn't it look the part? Shouldn't we be able to see that transformation, that growth, reflected in its appearance? Visuals are absolutely key to bringing these items to life. Remember those morphing staves and gluing swords we talked about? Don't be afraid to go all out with the descriptions to paint a vivid picture in the player's minds. If a sword is gaining power, let it emit sparks, crackle with energy, maybe even hum with a sound that can be felt as much as heard. Yes, let's make it a spectacle. Let the players see their items changing, growing, becoming something truly extraordinary. But how do we do that in a way that's both exciting and believable? What are some visual cues 
that would really sell this idea of an evolving item. Think about the different stages of evolution. Maybe the item starts out plain, unassuming, almost mundane, but as it gains power, new details emerge. Runes could appear on the surface, the metal could change color, or maybe even the shape itself could shift, becoming more ornate, more menacing, more reflective of the power it holds. I love that idea. It's like the item is shedding its old skin, revealing something new and powerful beneath. Right. But what about choices? Can players influence how their items evolve visually? Can they customize the look to match their character's personality or playstyle? Customization is a fantastic way to give players a sense of ownership over their evolving items. Imagine being able to choose the type of runes that appear on your sword or the color of the glow that emanates from your staff. Maybe you could even add embellishments like gems or engravings that not only look cool but also tie into the item's lore or grant additional bonuses. Now we're cooking. We're talking about items that are unique, personal, a reflection of the character who wields them. But hold on, I gotta play devil's advocate here. What about power creep? If these items are constantly evolving, getting more powerful, how do we keep things balanced? Yeah. How do we make sure the game stays challenging and engaging? Balance is absolutely crucial when it comes to evolving items. We don't want them to become so powerful that they trivialize encounters or overshadow the rest of the game. One approach is to introduce drawbacks or limitations to offset the item's increasing power. Maybe that super sharp sword becomes more brittle, or the staff's powerful spells drain the character's energy faster. Ah, uh, so it's like a trade-off. Yeah. You get more power, but there's a price to pay. Yeah. That keeps things interesting, for sure. But what about the world itself? Shouldn't the challenges the players face also evolve to match the growing power of their items? Absolutely. The world needs to push back to present challenges that force players to adapt and think creatively. Maybe new enemies emerge that are resistant to the item's powers, or existing foes develop new tactics or abilities that require a different approach. Okay, so it's like an arms race. The items get stronger, but the world adapts, keeping the challenge level high and ensuring that players never feel like they've become invincible. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. We want our players to feel like they're constantly being tested, constantly pushing their limits. Exactly. It's about finding that sweet spot where the players feel powerful but not overpowered, where they're constantly facing meaningful challenges that require them to use their evolving items strategically and creatively. This is all so fascinating. We're talking about items that have history, that have personality, that grow and change alongside the characters who wield them. It's like a whole new layer of storytelling potential has been unlocked. But what about the bigger picture? How do these evolving items fit into the overall narrative of a campaign? How do we make them feel like an integral part of the world, not just some random loot drops? That's where the art of world building comes in. We need to think about the origins of these items, their history, their significance in the grand scheme of things. Maybe they were crafted by legendary artisans, wielded by famous heroes, or even forged from materials of otherworldly origin. Okay, so we're giving them a backstory, a purpose, a place in the world. Right. And maybe even a name. Sure. I mean, a legendary item deserves a legendary name, right? Absolutely. And don't forget to consider the item's potential impact on the world. Maybe it grants its wielder unique abilities that could change the course of history. Or perhaps it's a key to unlocking a hidden power or location. So it's not just about the item itself. It's about the ripple effect it has on the world around it. I love that. Yeah. But how do we actually bring all of this to the table? How do we introduce these evolving items into our campaigns without overwhelming our players or derailing our stories? That's a great question, and it leads us to the practical side of implementing evolving items. Remember, we don't want to just dump a ton of information on our players all at once. It's about revealing things gradually, letting the mystery unfold organically as they progress through the campaign. Okay, so it's like peeling back the layers of an onion. You get a taste of what's to come, but the full flavor is revealed slowly over time. That's a great way to keep players engaged and coming back for more. Mm. So we've talked about all these amazing concepts, growth foundations, bonding mechanics, customization, balance, even the visual evolution of these items. But how do we bring all of this to life at the table? I mean, I'm already scribbling notes like crazy, but I need some practical advice, some tips and tricks for actually implementing this stuff in my games. It's one thing to talk theory, right? Putting it into practice, that's where the real magic happens. And the good news is, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are tons of ways to integrate evolving items into your campaigns, regardless of your game system or setting. Give us the goods. What are some concrete examples? I'm talking specific scenarios, item ideas, maybe even some clever mechanics we can steal. I mean, borrow. 
for our own games. Okay, picture this. You've got a party venturing into a long forgotten temple. Deep within its shadowy halls, they stumble upon an ancient shield, its surface etched with faded runes. Now, this isn't just any shield. It's tied to the spirit of a long dead warrior, bound by a pack to protect those worthy of its power. Ooh, I'm already hooked. So how does the shield evolve? What are the triggers? That's where the growth foundations come into play. Maybe the shield gains power as the character performs acts of courage or selflessness, or perhaps it unlocks new abilities based on the types of foes they defeat, absorbing some aspect of their essence. Okay, so it's not just about hitting a certain level or finding a magic item shop. It's about the character's actions, their choices, shaping the item's destiny. I love it. Exactly. And think about those bonding mechanics. Maybe the shield whispers advice offering cryptic clues based on the warrior's past experiences. Or perhaps it reacts emotionally to certain situations, expressing pride when the character stands strong against a formidable foe, or even fear when facing a type of creature that proved fatal to its previous owner. Whoa, that's deep. It's like the item has a personality, a history that's intertwined with the character's own journey. Hmm. But let's talk visuals. How does the shield actually transform as it evolves? That's where you get to unleash your creativity. Maybe those faded runes start to glow as the shield gains power, illuminating the surrounding area with an ethereal light. Or perhaps the metal itself shifts, taking on a more intricate design with spikes or blades emerging from its surface. Now that's what I'm talking about, a visual spectacle worthy of a legendary item. Yeah. But you mentioned something earlier about absorbing the essence of defeated foes. Could that be a form of customization, like choosing which aspects to absorb, shaping the shield's abilities and appearance based on those choices? That's a brilliant idea. It adds a strategic layer to the item's evolution. Imagine a player having to decide, do I absorb the fiery breath of a dragon, granting the shield fire resistance but making it more volatile? Or do I opt for the regenerative properties of a troll, sacrificing offensive power for enhanced durability? This is mind-blowing. We're talking about items that are constantly changing, adapting, becoming something truly unique. But let's not forget about balance. How do we make sure these powerful items don't break the game? That's where limitations and drawbacks come into play. Maybe using the shield's full power comes at a price, draining the character's energy, inflicting a temporary curse, or even attracting unwanted attention from powerful entities. Ah, so it's a double-edged sword, literally. Wow. You get this amazing power, but you have yeah. to use it wisely. Strategically, there are consequences to every action. Exactly. And remember, it's not just about the mechanics. It's about weaving these items into the narrative, making them feel like an integral part of the world and the story you're telling. Okay, so it's not just a cool item. It's a plot device. A character yeah. in its own right. I'm starting to see the bigger picture here, but I still have one question. Where do we even begin? How do we take all of this inspiration and actually put it into practice at our own tables? Start by asking yourself, what kind of stories do I want to tell? What kind of world am I building? The answers to those questions will guide your item design choices. Don't be afraid to experiment, to try new things, to break the mold. Experimentation, yes. Yeah. That's the beauty of tabletop RPGs. Yeah. It's all about creativity, collaboration, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And who knows, maybe you'll even inspire your players to come up with their own ideas for evolving items. That's when the real magic happens, when everyone at the table is contributing to the creative process, shaping the narrative together. This has been an incredible deep dive. We've explored the power of evolving items from their growth foundations to their bonding mechanics, their customization options, and their impact on the narrative. And I'm feeling so inspired, so ready to unleash these incredible concepts in my own games. Me too. It's been a pleasure exploring this topic with you. A huge thank you to Lit RPG Reads for providing the spark that ignited this conversation. And of course, to the fine fellow himself, Paul Bello, for always inspiring us to think outside the box. Here, here. But wait, there's more. We want to hear from you, our amazing listeners. What are your thoughts on evolving items? Have you ever used them in your games? What are your favorite examples from books, movies, or video games? Share your ideas, your experiences, your wildest dreams in the comments below. We can't wait to read them. So until next time, keep those dice rolling, those imaginations firing, and those stories unfolding. And remember, the magic is in your hands.